Hey everybody, I'm Vampy. And I am Val. And this is Grady Meats. Where we grade stuff on an ever-changing meat scale ranging from A, which would be Kobe beef, Wagyu, or unicorn meat, <gasps> all the way down to E, which is barely <laughs> processed, uh, barely consumable people food. Vampy, we have a special guest with us today. Do you mind to tell us who that would be? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see her again. It is Amy <laughs> from Fantasy Fiction Fanatics. Hey, how's it going? It is fantastic. Uh, before we get started, Amy, uh, we here at Grady Meat want to wish you uh, early happy birthday. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, you will be uh, 25, is that correct? Close. I'm gonna be 26. I was gonna say, I think you're right off by a year. <laughs> I was close. I was you close. Were close. It was a good guess. I didn't even know if you knew how old I was, so I was like, oh, well, I just say? I knew you're 26 because you're about 10 years <laughs> younger than me, so I'm like, she's 26 now. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. well. Anyways, uh, the reason you are dressed the way you are is not because of the amazing movie we are about to watch, uh, but you were out at a birthday dinner with friends, and uh, we kind of caught you at the end of that. But we're glad to have you here. I know. Um, Amy, uh, before we jump into the amazing movie that is called Legend, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell our guests and our watchers a little bit about yourself? Um, I am the fanatic of Fantasy Fiction Fanatics. Uh, I have a channel that is dedicated to talking about fantasy fiction in general. Um, a lot of them are related to books, though we, uh, I do deep analysis of different books that we're going through. I do character analysis. I talk a little bit about writing fantasy as well. Um, I have a blog that does a lot of talking about fantasy, things like that. So I, if, if you are looking for a place for fantasy, I am the place to go. <laughs> uh, guys, that is absolutely, absolutely true. true. Absolutely. I, enjoy, I enjoy the weekly trivia questions. Uh, yeah, I do questions, which Valdemir finally got one right. Uh, right? <laughs> Did I, you really? Who, who who was it? It was uh, the 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 uh, the blacksmith with the the metal arm. I can't remember his name now. Iron Forger, Ironfeld, Ironfeld. Yes, there you go. Yep. That's right. But uh, all the other questions I get I wrong. A few, all I got a few correct, but I think what happens is I, I keep forgetting that I'm known as Vampy, and I go, "Oh, it's Kristen. No, it's Krista Jean. God damn it! How does she know me?" Well, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't look. I always know that up. it's you. It's just uh, you. Whenever you answer, I think you've gotten it right. Uh, okay. you're like, fine, um, but whenever it's you... not wrong, I because I only answer the ones I know. <laughs> I think that is the case for most of the people who answer the the trivia question. Is they if they think they know it. Occasionally, people get it wrong, but a lot of times, I get mo a lot of right answers. I think the last one I did. The last one I did, I can't remember. You were talking about like why do they have to keep remembering a certain spell? And it was because once they use yeah. a spell, they forget the words. And I, yeah. I typed that out <laughs> and I saw a few other people. I'm like, wow, people haven't read this. Oh my God, I am a geek. Yes. Well, speaking <laughs> of people not reading and or seeing, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the movie we're watching tonight. Let's talk about Legend. Amy, oh my God. you have not seen this movie at all. Is that correct? That's correct. I don't even know if I haven't heard of it before we discussed doing it. That's fine. See, and that is that is so surprising to me. And uh, <laughs> as as big into fantasy as you are, th this movie was a staple for me when I was a kid. This is like um, like okay, way, so way to fantasy shame. Val. No, no, not at all. Uh, so, so okay, for for those of you that don't know, uh, Amy came season one. She did Lady Hawk with us. That was yeah. low fantasy, right? That was a warm yeah, I, introduction. I, I kind of started you off easy, and actually, right. one of your criticisms, which was a completely legit criticism, of Lady Hawk, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, it's not fantasy enough. I'm like, oh, I got you then. Well, now, <laughs> now, bad. It just was, I expected no. More. You expected more. I, I it was. It, you're right. It was more of like of a medieval action mm -hmm. adventure, and it just happened to have a little bit of like a mythology in there. Right. This is. I am dumping you into fantasy world. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So with this, uh, we have some wonderful actors. Uh, Tim Curry is darkness uh, uh excuse me the lord of darkness the lord of darkness i apologize uh tom cruise in his uh fantasy debut 
is in this movie with his luscious locks and yeah. confused looks. Uh, Mia Sarah of uh, Ferris Bueller and Time Cop fame. She is in this too, so uh, along with a bunch of other people that I can't remember their names. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, the, you won't. The, no. Uh, no but... Well, God, I think what's funny is I think when I first met you, Amy, I told you like, I love fantasy movies. My mom raised me on fantasy. Mm -hmm. So my top fantasy movies I grew up on were Legend, Lady Hawk, Labyrinth, all the L's. So this is one of the ones when it came out, you know, you have to imagine like four year old me watching it. And by the way, it's rated PG and it should not be. Ah. Be no, they barbecue people. Okay, They're, it should be rated PG thirteen. You're welcome for that spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to tell, like, I texted Val this morning, and I was like, I got to tell this story about my imaginary friends that oh, relate yeah, to that's this right. movie. Okay, go ahead. So give me five minutes here. So when I first watched this, I was very young. I was like four, five, six. Fell in love with it. I can quote it to this freaking day. But if you have been a fantasy person from birth, you have imaginary friends. And I based my imaginary friend off Tom Cruise in this movie. <laughs> I didn't even change the name. I had an imaginary friend named Jack. That's who lived amazing. in the forest, had long hair. He did not look like Tom Cruise because I didn't know. But he had the long hair, he lived in the forest. And because I was not very imaginative, he had a friend, which has nothing to do with the movie, by the way. There was a panther named Thur, because that's mm -hmm. how creative I was. Um, that's why I did like when I, I still do it to this day when I play Pokemon and stuff, I just like rearrange letters and their names and make it a name. So Panther name Thur. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's and, absolutely and, and, fantastic. Yeah, and I, I have that imaginary friend. I'm 37 this year, people, to today because I watched Inside Out with Bing Bong and I watched Drop Dead Fred. And I don't want my imaginary friends to disappear. <laughs> Uh, Every now and then I'm still like, hey, Jack, you still there? Oh, okay. Hey, Thur, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> now, to be fair, I I grew up on fantasy too, but I just grew up on different fantasies since I am younger than you. Absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I, like, I mean, I was growing up on like Lord of the Rings. Absolutely. <laughs> right. That was when I was like eight. That's when that came out. And that's about when I watched it, it was like eight or nine is when I was watching that. So, um, yeah, I, I grew just, up on 80s yeah, fantasy. I the older, a little bit older ones, uh, unfortunately. Well, that is why you have friends like us, so we can show this stuff to you and blow your mind. Well, Amy, before we get started with the epic fantasy adventure that is Legend, why don't you go ahead and let people know how they can find you on social media and YouTube and uh, any other sites that you have available? Uh, sure. On YouTube, you can either just search my name, Fantasy Fiction Fanatics, or uh, it is youtube.com slash fantasy fiction fanatics um you can find me on facebook uh which is facebook.com slash fantasy fiction one on twitter i am at fantasy fiction one and uh i am also on discord and i will make sure that you guys have the link so you can post that down below if anyone wants. absolutely we will have fantastic. all of the links down below guys the discord's awesome uh yes. not only is there just fantasy but there's all kinds of other off-topic conversations too it's a great uh, group of music's people. a big one mm -hmm. uh self selfless promotions or shameless promotions yeah <laughs> uh, all kinds of other stuff but uh ladies if you are ready i am ready and am we will ready. go ahead and get started fantastic guys we'll be back in about three seconds hi aria with uh my co-pilot <laughs> here uh we'll be back in about three seconds with the epic fantasy adventure legend legend Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is how we do it. First off, uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. You're going to have a good time. Uh, if you've been here for a while, welcome back. Uh, you're also going to have a good time. Uh, this is how we do it. Uh, I am on my Xbox, and Bampy is usually on her computer. Uh, and our guest, Amy, you're on your computer too. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, fantastic. So this is how we do it. We sync up as much as we can. We sit back, we laugh, we have a good time, and then we're going to talk about it afterwards. Okay. You guys ready? So ready. All right. So Amy and I are going to go first. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> one, two, three, play. Go ahead. Cool. All right. All right. Let's get into this. We are now pretty synced. <sighs> And Amy, just so you know, there is actually, I know you're reading this, so just listen to me. <laughs> There's actually two versions. We're watching the theatrical version, which has mm -hmm. a different soundtrack than the director version. Uh, this would be How the- How did they change the soundtrack? Do we know? 
They okay. So the original soundtrack for the director's cut was by Ridley Scott. It's a beautiful soundtrack, mm-hmm. but because this is the '80s, um, when they cut out a few parts, they wanted a kind of an '80s band to do it. So some of it's Ridley Scott's original soundtrack, which this is. But towards the end, you're going to hear some kind of '80s type songs by Tangerine Dream. So you're mm-hmm. going to find people that like love the Tangerine Dream soundtrack to death and people that swear by the Ridley Scott one. I like both versions personally. I like the Tangerine Dream version a little bit better. I mean, the the director's cut is cool and all. I dig that. But Mm -hmm. what I got started on, what hooked me, was the Tangerine Dream. And we're not talking like 80s songs, like what happened in Lady Hawk in the Mm -hmm. beginning. They actually make it a very mystical sound. No, this really fits. It's it's really, really really good. But I All guess right, it's not going to be any good Alan Parsons project like the last one. No, no Alan Parsons project. <laughs> uh, that is Tom Cruise right there on screen. <laughs> looks a little hairier than the last time I saw him. But a little bit. Yeah. He is young in this one. So. Yes, yes, yes very much so. <laughs> so you're going to notice, Amy, like a lot of this goes hardcore fantasy. There's glitter where there shouldn't be glitter. <laughs> random fairies and i mean it's just like you know when lady hawk didn't have enough fantasy i think i'm kind of giving you the exact opposite where i'm just gonna like shove it in your face (laughs) yeah (laughs) wait a minute let me ask you this uh vampy the fairy that's in this movie is that nicole kidman no that i didn't think so i i i had heard stories and rumors that it was but i didn't know not in the least Oh, you know what? I said Ridley Scott's soundtrack. It was Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack because Ridley Scott, hey, they're barbecuing someone. Ridley uh, yeah. Scott did the directing. But I love the makeup here with Blix and everything. Oh, the uh, the makeup effects on here are uh, amazing. I think my favorite character in this movie was the one little minion they showed with the grill. Well, he comes back later. Yeah. I liked Blix. I don't know. I apparently when I was young, I was into goblins. <laughs> S- sorry, Enigma. <laughs> you didn't graduate and grow up to dragons then. You were into goblins first. Can we just talk about like the glitter that's on her fucking face? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Like silver leaf right here. How fantasy is that? Like, we have to put glitter. Yeah, you gotta grab. It's just her na- yeah, it's also just her natural look. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. The Welcome man. to my imaginary friend, people. <laughs> <laughs> Maverick. I did think he was hot in this movie, though, and I still do. I'm sorry. Tom Cruise is a very good-looking guy. Uh, I love seeing this in high definition. <laughs> the The last time I watched this was on DVD. I'm and sorry. That's just... 480p. That I'm watching this in glorious... 1080p high definition uh, and it looks kinda, fantastic. We are too, by the way. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> has Tom done any other other um, fantasy related movies, or is this his only one? I more, think more this is sci-fi, the only but thing. this is the most fantasy one. Yeah. Oh, who knew that the uh, people that live in the forest were all about kinky? Also, I don't think that's that what's going of... on here, though. I know it's not. I've watched the movie, but I'm just wondering where the blindfold came from. It's the only clean article of clothing he owns. Oh, okay, probably hers. Fine. Great. Where did he pull it off of her? I'm oh. sorry. Never mind. Let's watch the unicorns. What do we got coming up? <laughs> Some things are just better off not known. <laughs> yeah, right. Some mysteries need to be mysteries. <laughs> See, what he's doing now is taking her somewhere that she does not even deserve he's to a, be. He's a child of the forest. She mm-hmm. is not. I, is he trying to do like an English accent or something? I don't know. Both of them are, and it's not working. You mustn't. He doesn't very really try to stop her very well. But I mean, put yourself in her position. Would you not want to fucking walk up there and? Well, I mean, she's in love with a man who can speak to like any animal. Like, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you want to try to communicate with it? Mm-hmm. By the way, they found the most beautiful horses for this. Not the poor unicorn. Happy birthday, Amy. We're fucking with the unicorns. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll be saved. Otherwise, I just quit this. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in about uh, three guessing. seconds with our review of uh, Legend. <laughs> yeah. He fucking told her. He told her. Don't yeah. go no over there and No sex tonight, Lily. 
What'd she do? Okay, she got it earlier, so she she covered her base first. Right. Also, you know, you should have really put like rules in place. Like, I'm gonna take you somewhere special. Don't touch anything. (laughs) (laughs) And no one one told you to take her, so it's technically your fault, Tom Cruise. The one's taken (laughs) off and the other is left alone. (laughs) You don't want nothing to do with her right now. No smooching. By the way, I found this like the most romantic thing in the fucking world when I was younger. This? Yeah. I can see that. Thank you, Val. <laughs> well, I mean, he doesn't want to kiss you, but apparently he still wants to marry you. So why did she throw? Was that a gift that was that a ring that she he gave her? It sounded like no, it was. no. So she said, as the princess, it's my right to make a challenge for my suitors. I'll find I'll marry whoever finds this. And she just tossed it. He could have, she could have at least tossed it in a like more convenient place instead of down in the river. <laughs> well, and she's she gonna make him know cases. now that because the unicorn's been caught, everything's gonna go to shit. In Excuse the me, princess, but before you toss that over the hundred foot cliff, <laughs> yeah. tell me where it's going. Set it down right there for a moment. That's so a challenge. Was, yeah, set it down right there. Him. That's a challenge. Who else are you gonna fucking was... marry? I thought, yeah, she was gonna give it to him at first. That's what I thought she was gonna do is be like, hey, th- like. This is my challenge. And I'm giving it to you, so then you can come and say, "Hey, you passed the challenge." Well, he's passing the challenge right now. Except now everything's frozen because the unicorn's poisoned. Ah, uh, well, that's true. Challenge failed. Poor okay, unicorn. What is he- <clears throat> Here's, you know, it's gonna be okay, Amy. I promise you. <laughs> Look at your <laughs> lip. You're like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Loved it. <gasps> Well, see, now she's realizing that she fucked up. Well, the problem is she didn't fuck up. They make her think she did. Right. Thoughts so far, Amy? So far, it's very interesting. I'm interested to see where this is going to go. She's very upset about the unicorn right now. Give her time, (laughs) I know. Poor unicorn. He was just frolicking. What did he ever do to deserve it? Oh. uh, Yeah. No, uh, worse is what she meant to say. Oh, I got my uh, worse. snacks for this movie. Oh my, God. oh my gosh, those are perfect. The M&M's. I was, no, I was no, going to see you like, pouring the whole thing in your mouth. Mm-hmm. I can Please here do. in a minute. He would. You know, let, me, let me stretch. Yeah, stretch the jaw. <laughs> I actually have some in my pantry as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what the next time i followed your advice and bought two bags instead of just the one there you go there you go <laughs> great you amy bringing uh, many m and lovers together <laughs> it's malcolm from malcolm in the middle no it's not sure it is no it really is not stop that <laughs> no. shit man for a boy of the forest he sure does not know a lot of the dwellers in the forest no do you know if they used any puppets or are these all actors? No, no, these or... are actors. Mm-hmm. These are actors. It's a pretty big lantern to be. Isn't it though? Around. Like, yeah. did they think it was like more fantasy forward if I give them a fucking huge lantern? Half the size of Tom Cruise? Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's like giant, <laughs> it's like a boulder next to him. <laughs> so my thing is, the question is, is he going to think that the unicorn was killed because she touched it? Or if they going to no. realize that the unicorn was killed separately? It, it, you know, they don't address it but i think he realizes as he goes on that there's something bigger at play Mm -hmm. is there only two yes it's a male Mm -hmm. and a female so so her mate's dead right now right so i'm saying like that means that there's no more unicorn she's the last unicorn ever exactly why everything turned dark and and cold because with both one of them gone light can't survive in this world i think in this part though the unicorn they doesn't understand. fault him. No. You know what I mean? Because, they don't even fault Lily. That's not right, the problem. Exactly. And I think that that's what they're communicating. Quite right honestly, if he, if he didn't bring Lily and he still visited them, he's yeah. innocent too. It would have yeah. happened anyway. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously the unicorn didn't mind Lily being there. The, the unicorn approached Lily exactly. in mm-hmm. the end. Lots of glitter was used in this movie, mm-hmm. by the way. And I'm a glitter person. Even I'm like, eh, it's a little too much. It's been to me that... that uh, mythical look that it i mean it, it does what look. it's it does what it's meant to do don't get me wrong it's why i fell in love with this movie when i was younger but part of me is like mm, that's a lot of glitter She's i worked in burlesque right i mean glitter is burlesque and craft herpes do not choke on those 
Wait a you st- minute. You start laughing. I'm in the middle of eating M&M's and I hear herpes. It said glitter is the burlesque and craft herpes. And I saw you nearly choke. Oh my God. You're welcome. Spoke too soon. What? Yeah, you made made it. it. I made made it. it. And Meg got you. I love Meg. I'm sorry. Foul tasting fairy. You know, he looks pretty hot in that armor. (laughs) It's nice armor, isn't it? It's pretty good. And his hair looks like, you know, like it's been like washed. (laughs) So he's, he's in good style right now. Oh my Lord. I did this, and now you're decapitated. Yay! <laughs> Level one dungeon. I was gonna say she was pretty weak there. Yeah. And he did look pretty surprised. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He rolled so, a oh, critical sh- critical uh, hit, nineteen yeah, or twenty. Nat twenty, right there. Yeah, first time. <laughs> of course, they always have to sneeze. I mean, his handkerchief was given to him by the Queen of America. <laughs> what? <laughs> there is no qu- such thing. I think we're, we're quoting the Three Musketeers movie. This was given well, you had to me Willow. By the I Queen. felt like I needed to quote something that was yeah. not this movie. This was given to me by the Queen America. There's no Queen of America. I beg to differ, <laughs> infant. Yeah. Little pimple. Meet me behind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Isn't that like the big rule of like horror movies? You don't split up. Exactly. And you also don't go upstairs because that. Never makes any sense. Or I don't down know why in you don't the basement. You know what? They, they, you probably should all just like cut it here. <laughs> they never think to escape. They just are like, let's go hide upstairs. And it's like, that's not the way out. Why don't you go out the front door that's right <laughs> behind you? Like, that's too easy. How's this doing with the fantasy aspect for you there, Amy? Oh, it's definitely a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good. See, she's done lost it by this point oh yeah she is well she's been <clears throat> seduced and she's hallucinating mm-hmm. and she feels guilty for fucking ruining the whole world even though it's not her fault even though it it's isn't. not her fault but she thinks it is she doesn't know <clears throat> we haven't even been on a date yet <laughs> how can we be getting married already hmm? they're on a date right now doesn't look very romantic to me <laughs> all know? right hero what are you gonna do? Oh no, not the beer. Where's his sword? The world may never know at this point. I have to say though, like this is the one movie where the armor is like a lot like women's armor in video games. It's not covering his arms or his <laughs> legs. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look good on him. His head, but it just really looks I will good say on him. He is. It, it, He's not, he has no sword or whatever, but I mean, he is pretty good at the gymnastics. Yeah, he's very nimble. (laughs) It must be the squatting. So what he's realizing right here that there's still sunlight, correct? Well, yeah. Yeah. Darkness knows that. They're going to do, again, anyone who's played Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time knows the Shadow Temple. You do a light thing with the shields and the, yeah, we're doing Mm. that. He is not a happy gamper. I think I've dated him before. That must have been an interesting relationship. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a blind date I had where he brought a, a feather duster and goes, I can see you as my little French maid. And I'm like, wow, oh, this date's over. Looks <laughs> like uh, it's skin 30. Time to go. Oh, and he took me to Pizza Hut. No, there's nothing wrong with Pizza Hut. It's there, just... is, there is when you give somebody a fucking feather a duster. A feather duster. Beforehand. Yes, absolutely. Yes. They collected so many of those trade things and they only brought one. <laughs> like, what was the point of all the other ones? Oh, no, no. They're still set up. Gotcha. Again, Shadow Temple. Excuse me, Oop. Mr. Darkness. Could you uh, not close those doors right now? You're kind of messing up our plan here. Yeah. Right? yeah. We can't kill you with sunlight. The doors are closed. Come oh, on. yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Let me open it back up for you. Hey, Screwball, come on. Also, how well do they know like Darkness's home to really position those like perfectly? That is just an answer that you will never have. No. no. I've watched since the 80s. I still don't have an answer. So They're just that knowledgeable. I mean, they're, they're the good guys. They have to know. Mm-hmm. They just know these things. Oh, there's a sword. 
Oh, there's a shield. <laughs> Where, how did it get there? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief. The most powerful magic in the world is love's true kiss. Oh. See, he doesn't have the ring, Val. He's oh. getting it now. Yes, not. He doesn't kiss her. He goes and gets a ring. Like, come on. Shh, shh. She said she'll marry whoever has that ring. Let him get the fucking ring. <laughs> well, right, but can't you at least kiss her and wake her up first? Like, I mean. That's not I mean, going to do nothing sleeping. unless she's he has sleeping. a ring she's in his fine. hand. I just oh, told you, the most powerful magic is love, uh, love's true kiss. Like, <laughs> it's a Snow White moment here. <laughs> Yes, that one. See, there we go. <laughs> See, it is the kiss. We just. Oh. By the way, her hair is suddenly perfect again. Oh, yeah. And well, she's also dress... not wearing the dark clothing or anything either. Yeah, her dress is perfect. Like, Jack, damn, you took time. It's the just... question is which one of those pervy boys undressed her? It's just one hell of a crazy night, guys. That's all of them. All. I didn't even drink anything last night. How do I have such a raging hangover? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got smacked man by the Lord. Dar- you know what? I'll tell you later. It's fine. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this later. Kissing first, explaining later. All right. We got uh, some things to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a couple seconds uh, and we will go ahead and discuss <laughs> Legend. Okay, so, uh, Legend, uh, Bampy, why don't you go ahead and get us started on that? Why don't you tell us how you feel about it? Well, I mean, I've got a um, nostalgic factor happening here. Mm -hmm. Um, I do love that movie. I love the director's cut. I love this cut. Um, To me, like, I thought it was the most romantic thing ever when I was growing up. So I I, I have to give it just a solid A. Okay, right on. It's, it's, I mean, because I'm I'm factoring the nostalgic factor. Mm-hmm. I'm factoring the fact that I can still watch it today and be like, oh, yay. <laughs> happy endings. <laughs> and, and, and really still feel like the fuzzy feelings that I used to feel. Right. Um, if you're watching it for the first time, which I know Amy will tell you about, but like that might not happen, like the nostalgia factor, but I don't know. Like I always found that like super romantic. I have the biggest crush on Jack. Well, I mean, for, for you and me, hell yeah. <laughs> for, for you and me, we grew up on this movie. I mean, yeah. this movie came out, what, in 86? Uh, yes. Uh, and I was seven years old. 85. 85, so I was I was six years old, and I think I watched it a couple of years after that, and uh, this is a movie that I grew up with. I mean, this yeah. is a movie that you grew up with. Well, I was one when it came out, but like, mm-hmm. um, because it was my, my sister would have been six, like, mm-hmm. period, around the right? Age. So, um, that's kind of why I was able to watch these types of things when I was younger because I had the older sister mm-hmm. and I was watching what she watched as I grew up, so right, gotcha. Okay, so you said you give this a straight holiday, a. A. holiday. Okay, perfect. Uh, Amy, why don't you go ahead and take it from there and why don't you give us your thoughts on this? Um, Okay, so fantasy-wise, this this hit the bill on the I love the deep fantasy. So I did think it was really cool. I do think that it's awesome Mm -hmm. that since it's an older movie, um, it didn't need any of the special effects and it still looked really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Fantasy-wise, they they didn't need to do a bunch of crazy special effects to make me feel... Like I was in a fantasy setting. So I think right. overall, the actual fantasy portion of it is top notch. Okay. Um, I, I hear a butt in there, though. <laughs> no, it's not necessarily a butt. It's just more of a personal thing is that I, I feel like the story was very lacking. simplistic. Yeah, it's lacking. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying that it was bad. And I, it doesn't totally bother me that there's plot flaws right. in, in it or anything like that. It just seemed like a very blase 
storyline. I okay. wanted 30 more minutes of them like explaining stuff. It, yeah, it, it seemed shorter than I expected it to be. I mean, I knew it was kind of a, sh- a little bit shorter movie, but it just kind of was like at its end. Yeah. Quicker. <laughs> Then, okay. You know, like, it, like it got, it got there very quickly. Agreed. Right. So it didn't feel Agreed. like there, it just didn't feel like there was much to it. Okay, I got you. So, yeah. so hard agree on that. On on the meat scale, how would you grade this? Um, for me, I think it would be a B minus. That's fair. That's roundabout the same area that Lady yeah. Hawk got. Yeah. It, it, it's. I, I again. But I, I think, think that's fair. Yeah, it's super strong in this one, but I feel like the story was a little bit more lacking in this one. So right. I think it kind of flopped. I really liked the story element of the Lady Hawk, and the mm-hmm. fantasy was a little, liked a little bit more. So that. if 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 they if they were to have taken uh, a like story. the story from Lady Hawk and the fantasy element from Legend and throw it together, you think that would be more along the lines of an older movie that like what you would be looking for in something like that. Um, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be exactly like you know a Lady Hawk story. Mm-hmm. I don't know even if Lady Hawk would try. Well, no, no, no. What, what I'm saying I mean, is, no, what I'm saying like, is yeah, that I, type the of attention to the yeah. story. Right. I would like to have a little bit more complexity to the mm-hmm. story with those fantasy mm-hmm. elements. I think would be really okay. nice. No, and I agree because I think um, one of my biggest things, even watching it now, I'm like, man, I need more story. Like you're there, you're there. I you got characters I care about, mm-hmm. but then you threw in a bunch of extra ones where I'm like, I don't know why you're there. Um, it would have been give nice. me just a little bit, just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It would have been nice to have a little bit more. I think a little bit more build up of like what the situation is. Like I mean, it kind of just it kind of just gets in there, which is not right. necessarily bad in some situations. But I think in this particular story, it would have been nice to have a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it would have been nice to have a little bit more of the evil side of it too. I feel like we didn't. Mm-hmm. I, no, he's I mean, gone. Didn't really get to explore with it, but, that too well. Yeah, he's gone right. for like a good chunk of the movie. It's mm-hmm. like, where did he even come from? What is even right? Like, how what did this come to be? His motivation. Right. Not just that, but just like, give me a little bit of backstory. Mm-hmm. Also, to me, like, so Jack is a human, but he's also a child of the forest. What makes him that? Mm-hmm. How did that right happen? Because he's not an elf. He's not a dwarf. He's no. not. He's human. I mean, you don't even know how, like, Lily and him. You don't mm-hmm. know like anything about. You know, she's a princess. The, that's the, it. The interaction between like the humans and the mm-hmm. like, like like were their love was their love forbidden like was their love like that like 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 that kind of stuff like those kind of things I'm like oh like that would have added a little bit more depth right like, oh, this like, movie makes you make love. a like, lot how did of they assumptions meet in the first place like uh, well let me let me dive into to how yes. I feel about this so so as far as nostalgia goes uh, like I said uh, earlier this is a movie that I grew up with uh, this was one of the movies that introduced me to fantasy this along with the never ending story and the dark crystal those are the three big ones for me those are my cornerstones uh, and throw highlander in there too oh yeah um so those are my cornerstones for movie fantasy and things like that and fantasy in general so so automatically this movie gets a pretty fair grade for me based on that alone uh but if if i were to go on uh strictly critical uh feelings towards this movie i agree with both of you 100 percent. amy you in particular where you're saying that this movie's story is really basic really vanilla it's it's like okay there they are okay this is the problem okay now they're finished and the movie is over uh and i i totally get that and i understand that uh and i can see where that is kind of like a letdown as far as that goes now as far as the visuals in this movie absolutely astounding uh, it still it's holds up still yeah. holds up some of the best Amazing. stuff that i have ever seen the the makeup effects and the visual effects and the lighting and all of that stuff is absolutely breathtaking and this whole movie was filmed on a sound stage everything that you saw in there done on a sound stage absolutely oh, cool. fantastic yeah um so as far as a grade goes for me i think i'm gonna do it a little bit higher than you amy but a little lower than you vampy i think i'm gonna give it a straight b plus yeah. i think that's my what nostalgia factor is a little high mm-hmm. if i took out the nostalgia factor i'd probably get a straight b for me right on okay um, if i was watching this from the first time with new eyes or mm-hmm. things like that right um because of the story visual is great acting absolutely mm-hmm. fine no problem with that 
but I do always want a little bit more out of the story. So I think it's safe to say that channel wise with Amy's uh, grade in there too, it gets a, a pretty can, even B. I think we can do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Because again, if I take my nostalgia out of it, it'd be right. A big right. Absolutely. So B plus Vampy, you're a, a non-nostalgia B. Non-nostalgia B and Amy, you're B minus. So we're right in the B range. That's pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's 80%. We'll take that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we get out of here, uh, Vampy, we've got some stuff coming up. Uh, yeah, uh, since Amy, since you're sitting here, so uh, I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be doing some stuff in the near future with Amy. She's not going away anytime soon. Uh, uh -huh. We have her under one contract. of us, one of us, Google gobble, Google we, gobble. We have her under contract, and uh, she's <laughs> obligated to. Uh, I don't know how many episodes are in the Tenth Kingdom, uh, but uh, we'll get to those when we get to those five episodes. I'll be at least five, yeah. and uh, she's going to come back and watch those with us. I've never seen it before, but right, which. Just talking about nostalgia, it. like I mean, let's already put my grade at like the max. max <laughs> well, I know me too. Like I, I see Val's grade not being anywhere near ours, and you and I'd be like, "No, you don't understand." <laughs> you um, simple-minded man. <laughs> well, you know, he might actually like it better, especially because he likes you know some of these older movies. And I do feel like I can see the similarities between like the two mm thousands. -hmm. Uh, time zone of it with matching kind of a little bit with these right. time zones of yeah. these older but he won't have the same crush on wolf that you know probably on. not uh That's but okay we, <laughs> he can't be perfect yeah I mean... it's okay you and me we'll be there Oh my God. Well, yeah. So the 10th kingdom, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is what you can expect. This is a, a, a precursor to what that yeah. will be. Yeah. As um, quiet as uh, we were during this, the 10th kingdom, it'll be me and Amy just going, Oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh my there God. might be drooling involved. Yeah. There might be. There might be actually. Heart uh, to the eyes. We, we also have uh, <laughs> a movie coming up. We're going to be watching with Enigma and that is going to be blank man. Yeah. He's uh, never seen blank man. No, we're, we're working on that. Uh, we have my demon lover that is on the list too. Also, that will also get a nostalgia rating for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also uh, heavy metal. Yep. Uh, Amy, if you've never seen that, that's got some pretty heavy fantasy elements in it too. Um, but uh, one Let's movie talk about that later. <laughs> One movie that I'm kind of pushing for this season uh, mm -hmm. that I've been wanting to watch with you since the beginning of the year Me? is, yeah, you, uh, is Microwave Massacre. Yeah, I know. I've been dying to watch that I movie. Know, and movie. and this was the movie that uh, could not be vetoed. This yeah, was my, we, we my one a choice. Veto a veto-free movie. Yeah, and this was mine. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've like, got... Microwave Massacre. No vetoes. No vetoes. It's like, but we've shit. we've got some other stuff in the fire too. We've got uh, some uh, gameplay stuff that we're gonna do. Uh, we've got an interview coming with uh, Pat Miller from Maximum Overdrive that happens oh next God, week, and then uh, yeah, and then I'm as still, soon, I'm still in holy shit mode. From <laughs> and then as soon as it's edited, it'll be out. Um, but uh, Amy, before we get out of here, why don't you go ahead and tell people one more time how they can get in touch with you through social media? Uh, and any other sites that you have available and maybe give them a sneak peek of some episodes or classes that you have coming up. Um, sure. So uh, you can reach me through the discord. I will make sure they have the link um, or you can go to fantasy fiction um, fanatics.net uh, with my blog. I have a contact form on there. You can do Facebook, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, facebook.com slash fantasy fiction one, or you can do Twitter, which is at fantasy fiction one. Okay, fantastic. Again, uh, I'll be down below. I promise. Yeah, that's all right. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Vampy, before we get out of here ourselves, why don't you go ahead and tell people how they can get in touch with us? Yeah, we are at Grady Meet on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And also you can email us at gradymeet at gmail.com. Absolutely. If you got any suggestions or anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out to us through social media or through email. Uh, everything goes in a book and her and I talk about it at length uh, throughout the, the week. Book. I have the book. Yeah, absolutely. And I get so, random calls. So, uh, Amy, did you have a good time tonight? I did. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me back. Fantastic. Always. Uh, will we get to see you again in season three? Uh, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you're going to find something. <laughs> yeah. We well, already asked how many during this episode. Yeah. 
okay. Dark Crystal something. Fantastic. Well, Vampy, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and end this awesome night and take uh, us out of here? I've had so much fun. I'm sorry. <laughs> As always, thank you for joining us for this helping. And we hope to see you for the next serving of Grady Meat. And if in case you've forgotten, I'm still Vampy. I am still Val. And our guest is... Amy. <laughs> and this is still Grady Meat. And we hope you have a great one. <laughs>